When I was 18 years old, I went to New York for the first time. Now, prior to that, I had never even been outside of my city by myself. I had never been to downtown Dallas, which is just 30 minutes away from my house by myself. So, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to fly on a plane by myself. I didn't know how to get around the city. I didn't know how to do anything. I don't even think I had been to a restaurant by myself at that point. There were a lot of things that I hadn't done yet. And I was definitely still a kid mentally. Even though I had graduated from high school, I still felt like a kid. And I felt like my parents treated me like a kid as well. For example, whenever I told my parents that I was gonna go to New York by myself, my dad insisted on coming with me. And you know, he kept pressing me about it. And eventually I had to tell him like, yo, this is my trip, like I'm gonna go by myself. You can come if you want, but we're not gonna be staying at the same place. We're not gonna go out together. Like we're not gonna do any of that. I'm doing this myself. You know, I want to do this by myself. And I had always been pretty independent, but obviously, you know, going to New York City was a whole different level of independence. And so I went on the trip by myself and, you know, it didn't go perfect. I caught the flight by myself, that went well, but when I got there, I got lost multiple times. My phone died, couldn't find my way to the place I was staying at, which I was staying with a bunch of strangers that I had never met before. And, you know, things were kind of rough at first. But throughout the course of the trip, I really kind of became comfortable with traveling by myself and just making my way around the city and doing what I needed to do. And I feel like I came back from that trip a completely different person. That trip instilled the confidence in me to know that I can take care of myself, maybe not financially, you know, even though I wasn't making enough money. I knew that if I were making enough money, I could go out and survive at the very least. If I could survive a week in the biggest city in the world, I could survive a week anywhere. Now that to me is kind of the first thing that I feel like makes you a man. It's when you can truly take care of yourself. You can look out for yourself. You can go where you wanna go. You can provide for yourself. You have the level of independence required to be away from your parents or whatever guardians you have and really fend for yourself. You know, walking through the streets of New York at night, you know, don't don't get it twisted. I wasn't like walking through Brownsville projects or anything like that, but you know, I was still walking around an unfamiliar city at night by myself. And you know, I felt like if something were to happen, I could take care of myself. I could defend myself. I could do what I needed to do to get away from the situation. And also, just on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I could go out get my own food, go grocery shopping. I could do all of those things and just basically do the necessary things for survival. I was able to learn on the go, you know, taking the subway, doing all of these different things. I was able to learn on the go and adapt to different situations depending on what the situations required. I feel like that's what makes you a man is when you can adapt to different situations. You know, being able to have that level of independence to take care of yourself because you know that you can adapt to different situations. You start to see yourself differently. When you can face the trials and tribulations of life, or even the artificial ones that you set for yourself, like when I took that trip to New York, I didn't have to do that, but I wanted to. And like I said, it paid off, it made me a man. I came back from that trip a man. Like I said, I could provide for myself, I could be by myself, and I could adapt to different situations. Now, I took those same exact tools that I gained from that trip and applied them roughly a year later when I dropped out of college. Okay, now dropping out of college, to me, that was another thing that really pushed me towards manhood. Because once you are out of school, you have to understand that you are in the real world. Once you finish high school, you can really put yourself out into the working world and start a life for yourself, start a career, you know, learn different trades or whatever you need to do. So. You know, going to college, I realized that I didn't want to be there. And so I took that leap of faith and I rejected all of the conditioning that I had inherited throughout my years of school. And, you know, from my parents and just from everyone else who didn't really see the vision of entrepreneurship that I had for myself. And that to me was another thing that made me a man because I learned to think for myself. You know, I learned to stop thinking about what other people wanted for me. And I learned to kind of 
do what I want to do because at the end of the day, it's my life and I should be able to do with my life what I want to do because I'm the one living it. And people didn't necessarily agree with my decision at first. They didn't see my vision and that's okay, you know, because it's my vision. It's my life. As long as I see my vision, that's all that matters. As long as you see your vision, that's all that matters. You have to learn to think for yourself as a man or as a woman, if you're a woman watching this, really as an adult. But as a man, you have to be able to think for yourself. And that goes right along with being able to take care of yourself and being independent and being able to adapt to different situations. You have to be able to think for yourself and follow that vision in your head. Even if it doesn't seem possible to you, you just have to be willing to follow it, to try, just to try, and to take that leap of faith and bet on yourself. If you know that you're destined for more than what you're doing with your life every day, then you have to be willing to take that leap and start doing what you're here to do. Start making definite steps towards that goal. Now, my next step towards manhood was starting this YouTube channel right here. You know, this is something that I always wanted to do subconsciously, but I was just too scared because I had developed this perception of myself that I wasn't intelligent, that I wasn't well-spoken, I wasn't good-looking. You know, all of these different perceptions that I had developed about myself, this negative self-talk, and I had to learn to reject that, face my fears, you know, face my biggest fears of being on camera and talking and interacting with people and just putting myself out there and make these videos. And for a while, you know, it didn't really get anywhere. For like a year, I was trying to get to a thousand subscribers. And now I'm finally starting to get some traction, like some real actual traction. And I'm able to make a greater impact in people's lives. And to me, that really pushed me towards manhood. You know, being able to face my fears head on and do what I knew I wanted to do deep down inside, even if I would be judged for doing it. And in reality, I really wasn't judged for doing it. Nobody said anything. Nobody hated on me. Like, I had nothing but support. But for you guys, it might not be like that. You know, people might hate on you. People probably will hate on you. I definitely get haters now. I get dislikes on all of my videos. It comes with the territory. It's part of being great. You know, when you start to do great things, people are going to hate on you because they can't do those great things themselves. They're too scared to take that leap of faith and bet on themselves. So that's how you know that you're doing something right when people start to hate on you. And another reason why people will hate on you is because you're being yourself. And when you are yourself, people are intimidated by the level of authenticity that you project out into the world because they themselves have not learned how to do it yet. And you have to learn to just, you know, ignore the noise, like just keep doing what you're doing and be yourself. As soon as I started to be myself and I stopped trying to make videos just for views, that's when I started to get the most traction on my channel. Even to this day, I just hit 6,000 like two days ago and I'm on track to hit 7,000 probably by like next week. So, you know, as soon as I started to embrace myself and be my true authentic self, people started to gravitate towards me because people can sense that. You know, if you can look me in my eyes and tell me that I'm not being myself, I don't know what to tell you, you know, because this is me. Like, I am presenting to you Jordan Green. So if you do those things that I just said, be yourself, face your fears, learn to adapt, take risks on yourself, bet on yourself, learn to take care of yourself, you'll find that you'll become a man. That to me is what being a man is. Now that I've explained what being a man is, let me explain what being a man is not. Now I feel like there is a big problem in society with toxic masculinity. For a while I didn't really know what that meant. My definition of toxic masculinity is trying to fit into the societal archetype of what you think a man is supposed to be. Okay, so you're not embracing your true authentic self. Instead, you are trying to really be a man as opposed to just being one. A lot of men have been conditioned from a very young age to suppress their feelings and to carry themselves a certain way, to dress a certain way, to talk a certain way, walk a certain way, to treat other people a certain way, all in the name of being a man, maintaining that masculine energy. And I feel like 
what really ends up happening is a lot of people develop insecurities about not fitting that archetype. You know, they're too concerned with being a man. On one of my old videos, I'm not gonna say which one, but on one of my old videos, I saw somebody comment something about feminine emotion and they used it as an insult, okay? They, they were trying to insult another man that they were arguing with and they used the idea of feminine emotion and that made me cringe hardcore people are really living like that people are really trying to avoid their emotions and their feelings and they're not willing to express themselves all in the name of being an alpha you know and i've made it very clear that i don't really like using those terms you know alpha and beta because i don't like what they're associated with you know being an alpha is associated with being this this strong masculine you know, it, it, it's all about the archetype. You know, it fits that archetype. And so many people try to be alphas, and in doing so, they're being betas. A beta is somebody who rejects who they truly are so that they can impress other people. An alpha is somebody that embraces who they are and allows the right people to gravitate towards them. Don't fall into that cycle of toxic masculinity. It won't get you anywhere. Somebody will break that. Somebody will expose you one day and you'll have a full on identity crisis. And a lot of times it'll be a girl that'll break you. You know, you'll come in trying to be hard and trying to, you know, put on this facade of who you're trying to be. And she's going to break that. She's going to shatter that. And it's going to completely change your perception of yourself. But maybe that's what some of y'all need. You know, some of you guys need to be broken to really learn to embrace who you are. You need to break that outer shell to find that inner light. That inner light represents who you truly are, who you're meant to be. It represents the independent version of you, the adaptable version of you, the version of you that embraces himself and is a leader in doing so. Because most men, like I said, are trying to fit into that societal archetype. I'm not doing that. You know, I'm wearing a pink shirt, and yes, I did that specifically for this video just to prove a point. Some people might call me a pretty boy. I like poetry. I like R&B. I like all of these things, and that doesn't make me any less of a man because at the end of the day, I'm being myself, and I don't care what anybody thinks. That, to me, is what makes me a man. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm doing what I want to do with my life because it's my life. It's my vision for myself. I'm going to do what makes me happy. And I'm going to try to help as many of you guys do the same by leading by example and by making videos like this. So basically, in conclusion, the way to be a man is to be yourself. <laughs>